Hi, welcome to Video Poem. I'm Don DeBar. See, I fooled you again. Bob's not here this week. Uh, he was generous enough to give me this time on the air here. Um, and I'd like to thank uh, him and um, the uh, Newcastle Community Television folks uh, for making this possible. Um, to those of you uh, in Osning who've wondered where have you been, because I haven't been on cable there now for a good four and a half years, um, that's a long story for another day, but suffice to say that it was made uh, very difficult for me to uh, be on the air there by certain uh, parties that um, really don't like to hear any differing opinions about what uh, goes on there and what they do. Uh, nevertheless, um, we have some stuff to cover here today that I think is of uh, some importance and hopefully of some interest to you. Um, we're going to start with a couple of local things. First, really a question, and this is for the mayor and village board of the village of Osning, where I live. Um, those of you who have followed it know that uh, it's been since 1998, so 13 years uh, since the uh, several village boards and mayors back, uh, village government uh, introduced developer Lou Capelli to the uh, Austin community as they uh, offered to hand over the village's public waterfront uh, to Capelli for a, a condominium development, a luxury condominium development. That was 13 years ago, uh, this October 6th. And those of you who have been down at the waterfront um, in the uh, last month, year, week, yesterday, uh, may have noticed that uh, there is no condominium development at this site. Um, even though you might remember five years ago, uh, last month, there was a uh, much heralded groundbreaking attended by uh, the new developers, uh, which consisted of Capelli and uh, Martin Ginsburg, or Ginsburg Development, uh, as partners in an entity called Harbor Square. Um, long story short, under the agreement that was signed by uh, the Capelli and Ginsburg entities uh, with the village, uh, they were supposed to complete the construction a few years back now, and if you use the calculations set forth in the uh, agreements between the developer and the village. Uh, the developer actually owes uh, the people of Osning somewhere in the neighborhood of about a million dollars now. And there hasn't been any move by uh, Bill Hanauer or the village board uh, to enforce the contract, at least that's been made public, and certainly the village has not received a check for this. To the contrary, the developers filed certiorari proceedings for the years immediately after they took title to the property, seeking to reduce the taxes, this is the tax on the vacant land, mind you, uh, to reduce the taxes to 10% of what was being uh, owed. I won't say collected because from what I understand they weren't being paid, but um, to reduce the assessment, which is the mechanism by which this happens, uh, to 10% of the assessed value at the time. Um, there was a settlement reached um, by uh, the village um, and the town of Osning uh, with the uh, developers and the assessment was basically cut about in half. So this big taxpayer we were promised not only isn't collecting even the taxes on the vacant, uh, you know, on the condominiums that were supposed to be there that we told you if they were built was actually going to cost revenue. Um, because you have to pay for services for people who live in the condominiums. Um, but we're not even getting the whole bite on the vacant land because uh, they sued to have it reduced to 10%, and the town and village caved and said, well, how about 50%? Um, so anyway, we haven't received the money that I'm aware of. It hasn't been heralded in the press for sure, uh, that it appears we're owed by the developers under the contract. Uh, the project still hasn't been built 13 years later, um, you know, and, uh, and um, the land is still there doing nothing. Um, it has been officially cleaned up, more or less. They knocked down the buildings that were there, including the uh, businesses that used to be there paying taxes, like Flavor Sciences. Uh, they knocked down the um, 
building that the village owned on the old Maui property that could be, could be being used now for uh, the food stand. I don't know how many of you folks go down to Tarrytown uh, to the waterfront and uh, at uh, Sunset Cove where they have the tiki bar outside um, and, you, and they have a grill outside. They sell burgers and pulled pork sandwiches and a bar that's very, very busy from uh, spring till fall um, generating revenue and uh, affording just about every member of the community an opportunity to go sit down and eat and drink on the uh, shores of the Hudson River because it's a very modestly uh, priced uh, arrangement. You can buy a hamburger for like three bucks or two bucks. That could be going on and operated out of the Maui building, the concrete block building that was there. It would require a couple of charcoal grills and a couple of plates up on the wall for a menu and a cash register. Um, anyway, all of that's been scraped off. Now we have um, land that all it needs is grass seed to be a park and um, apparently an obligation under the contracts for uh, Capelli and Ginsburg's entities to uh, write us a check for this million bucks or maybe it's 900,000, maybe it's a million one now. I haven't calculated it in a few months, but it's, it's a nice chunk of change. So um, that's what's been going on with the waterfront. I haven't done much other than um, we had uh, brought a lawsuit back, uh, I think we served it the day that they had their groundbreaking and uh, they sort of took away their, uh, the wind out of their sails for the big press event, um, that uh, I missed a court date in the middle of that lawsuit while well, my wife was having chemotherapy, I miscalendered it, so uh, Judge Joan Lefkowitz threw the case out of court because I missed the conference. And I appealed that, saying, look, we were arguing that this is parkland. Here's a substantive case about it. Can we try it on the merits? And the appellate division said no. So eventually we're going to end up refiling the lawsuit because the nature of it is such that we can. Um, but uh, that has been sort of the extent of my involvement with uh, the waterfront since. And I guess everybody else is because nothing's going on down there and the village isn't doing anything about it. Um, Another local issue, though, that's of uh, probably more immediate concern has to do with a special election that's being held on April 4th. This was only announced um, three weeks ago, four weeks ago, if that. Um, we're taping on March 23rd right now. Um, and actually, the school district wanted to have this special election, it's really a bond referendum, in March. They wanted to have it immediately, which would have given people no opportunity to uh, hear about it and to understand it whatsoever. Um, as it is, most of you probably don't know what I'm talking about. The school district has decided and has uh, recently assembled a proposal um, to spend just shy of seventy million dollars doing various construction projects on the uh, various school buildings. There's a claim that we have to do this now and now meaning have to have the vote in April as opposed to having it in May when we're already paying to have a school board election and uh, a referendum on the on the um, annual budget excuse me but um, the the uh, election is going to take place this bond referendum is going to take place uh, April 4th nevertheless um, basically the underlying uh, reason that we're being given for this is that financing costs and construction costs are at record lows and that if we don't act immediately we won't be able to take advantage of that. Now as anyone who follows the, is following the economy understands that we're still in a downward trend or a flat trend. The economy is not going to turn around between April and May. I wish it were. I'm sure everyone out there wishes that it were. But that's not the case. Construction costs will not go up, certainly, between April and May of this year, or any point in any uh, contract that's going to matter by a month one way or the other. And um, neither are financing costs. You know, ultimately, p people that are paying attention to these things uh, may recognize that there will be inflationary pressures at some point when this whole economic crisis is resolved, or in any event, after the passage of some significant amount of time, simply because so much money was printed um, in the process of handing over our public treasury to Wall Street, done by uh, President Bush and President Obama. But 
in terms of there being a necessity or even you know the slightest need to hold a special separate election in April and not wait until May be because of some foundational you know macroeconomic things it's an absolute fabrication a total fabrication so you have to ask yourself why is it being told why is this being said and what, what, what's being sold here and what's going on like beneath the surface well the other thing that's being said is that there's going to be a tremendous increase in the school district population now this is exactly the opposite of what they were just saying a year or two ago in the process of assembling the comprehensive plans for the town and village of Ostning, um, in the process of reviewing the development projects in Ostning, as you'll recall for example the uh, school district said that the Capelli project of when it w was going to have 225 condominium units, most, a lot of two and three bedroom units, was going to generate 18 school children. Now, if you look around Ostning at how many other construction sites there are of that size, you realize that it, you'd really be cramming some buildings in to, to generate another 200 students. Yet suddenly they're projecting like, I forget, 50, 70 percent, some huge increase in the school population over the next 10 years that's going to require us building classroom space now or they're threatening that the kids are going to have to do split sessions and all kinds of crazy stuff, which is totally not true. Why is this being sold? Well, you have two things going on. One is the, you know, the bond issue itself and, and the merits you know, on that. Is this necessary or not? Because I, you know, there, it's not a matter of not spending money on the children. Let me be clear about this. Okay? I believe strongly in a large public sector, if not an exclusive public sector. I mean, I lean that way. Okay? So the idea of spending money on public education to me is a no-brainer. It should be spent, and we should be spending what we spend on the military on education and spending what we spend on education on the military, maybe. I mean, that you know, idea, the, the slogan that people say about, you know, wouldn't it be wonderful if they had to hold a bake sale uh, to build a bomber and uh, we had the money from uh, the military to fund education. That's, that's where, I, where I lie. But when you're spending $70 million, the first thing that you should be asking yourself is, are we spending it on the right stuff? And there's been no opportunity to vet that at all. See, I'm bringing this up because construction projects, when they get proposed by municipalities, government officials, you know, people that have control of the public purse, an awful lot of self-dealing goes on in those projects. I'm telling you that for, as somebody who's spent 40 years in the title insurance business in real estate, watching deals get made. And I worked in New York City for a good 25, 30 years, watching large projects get assembled, public-private partnerships with the city, uh, the housing development fund companies, uh, Chase Community Development, you know, all this stuff that, you know, the big stuff. Um, I'm really familiar with it. And when I say that a lot of self-dealing goes on when these deals are being made, I'm not making it up. So there's that in the back of my mind anyway, and it's something that should be considered when somebody's saying, we have to do this now, and you haven't had a chance to look at it. But the real thing is, if you're going to take $70 million and apply it to the needs of the students, let's concede that the money needs to be spent. If you think about it, that's about 35 teachers salary and benefits for their entire 20-year career. Okay, if we have uh, 3,500, 4,000 students, whatever, maybe a little more than 4,000 in the district now, if you think about what the impact of adding over the careers of these teachers, so you know, over more than a whole class from kindergarten through uh, 12th grade, 35 more teachers into the mix. Think about the reductions in class size, uh, the added uh, resources that can be brought to a class where, you know, if you have an extra sociology uh, teacher, for example, I don't even know if they have in the school now sociology anymore. They did when I was there. You know, you have somebody that can float and bring uh, information, additional information, or, you know, can do uh, research or support work. Um, 35 teachers would have a, a very large impact. We need that more 
uh, or do we need that less than we need to relocate the entrance way into the back of the high school, for example, for you know uh, five figure, five or six figures, just reconfiguring the entrance way to the high school in the back. Um, you know, there's also the institutional bureaucratic uh, response. You know, you you're managing an operation over time. You just put things on a list. Um, you know, as almost like maintenance items, they're, you know, capital improvements, but they're, you know, the replacement uh, type things or enhancements. You know, there's sort of, that stuff kind of takes a life on of its own too, and you have to kind of watch against that and guard against that. That's the job of uh, the school board members, for example, and, you know, and also people who are involved in uh, things like the uh, budget uh, advisory committee and, and other, you know, planning uh, groupings. You know, to make sure that uh, just the rote activity of the administration doesn't, you know, lead you astray and off mission. Um, you know, there are a lot of factors that uh, can be involved in coming to a bad decision, but certainly from the point of view of the public, um, both the, the constituency for the students, you know, their parents and the members of the community that recognize the value of, of education, and also from the point of view of taxpayers who are going to pay for this stuff, having them be shut out of a process by virtue of it basically being not widely publicized and then not being you know, held uh, openly, you know, broadly, and in a way that invites participation, first of all, like happening in a longer period than a month or six weeks, you know, the outcome's going to be bad for those constituencies regardless of the intent of any other parties under those conditions. The people that are in this community either, uh, you know, part to participate as uh, students, parents, um, you know, others that are supporting education and of taxpayers who are funding this stuff, you know, their role is key in terms of the operation of the community and they damn well deserve you know, an opportunity to participate in the decision making. And the reason I'm bringing that up is what's being offered is so extraordinary. They're having a special election for this. Now, I don't know if you followed the election in Croton, uh, the village election that just took place a few weeks ago, but there was a referendum there. Most of the villages in Westchester County, um, Austin residents may not be aware of this because it's not the case in Austin, but most of the villages in Westchester, Putnam, in, and around New York State, they take place in March. There's a separate election for village uh, offices, and the reason being that they assume people will be less inclined to look at a national ticket, like you know, who's in which party running for the White House really doesn't have much to do with operating the sewer plant or the water plant or the, or the road maintenance in a village. That was one reason, and another is just to encourage more direct participation in the government. It's a small, manageable you know, thing. This is you know, an old... Um, condition that we inherited. Well, in Croton, they just had a referendum to move the election from March to November, and the big argument was that we can't afford the expense of an additional election right now. Let's have them all in one day. What's interesting is a lot of the same political people that made that argument are making the argument that this special election has to be held in April and can't wait until May. And we're not talking March to November, that we're talking April to May here. And we're not talking about electing some, you know, uh, the petty officials at five or $10,000 a year salary, but a bond for about 70 million bucks. It's like 69 million and change. Um, I'm having a hard time feeling comfortable with that situation. And I'm wondering if something can't be done about essentially forcing the issue uh, through, I don't know, through the uh, state education department or, um, or through the court system. It's uh, pretty frightening to me that something this huge can go on in Austin, where you have a record number of people in foreclosure right now. I don't know this for a fact, but I'm going to make a really educated guess that also there are probably a record number or a very high historical number of people that are either delinquent in the payment of their real estate taxes or that aren't showing up as delinquent but are struggling because of the employment picture, um, you know, the entire condition of the economy, basically. 
So, you know, this expense is going to be borne by uh, residential taxpayers and by uh, residential tenants um, primarily uh, who their rent reflects the you know, tax increase. And this is happening in Osning where those things are stresses. You know, they're saying we're going to borrow 70 million bucks to build a whole bunch of stuff that we don't need right now, but we're really in trouble 10 years from now if we don't do it. In Bronxville and places like that, they're looking at laying off teachers because of the economy right now. Those districts' budgets are, are, you know, essentially threatened. And, you know, it's one thing to look at, you know, the politics, if you're going to do it by class and say, well, you know, wealthy communities, they tend to be more conservative and they tend to be less inclined to spend public money. That's true in almost every other area except for the education of their own kids, where they have no problem whatsoever sucking as much money out of the state as they can and helping to craft the formulas that allow them to do that, at, you know, up in Albany, as a matter of fact, um, and uh, subsidizing it, you know, locally with their own property taxes. Uh, of course, people who are wealthier that tend to be uh, more highly educated value education enough to spend it, and yet those people right now are looking at teacher layoffs because of the economics, while the Austin district is looking at spending enough money to pay for like 35 teachers for their whole careers, for 20 years worth, on this particular bond to build, spend the money instead on construction. And I'm not saying you could, could do this or that. It hasn't been studied at all. But this thing has to happen in April. Can't even wait till May. There's something wrong with that. I'm sorry. Something fundamentally wrong. And... You know, you can attack people that are raising that question and accuse them of all kinds of things, but it'd be hard, you'd really be hard pressed to find someone that's more of an advocate for public economy, for public improvements, you know, than I am. I mean, if, among the political elite in Austin, for example, the entire village government, town government, uh, the Bill Burton and the whole group of Sandy Galef and the whole group of them sat by watching. Uh, the turnover of public park land on the Hudson River to developers for condominiums while I sued for several years pro se out of my pocket to stop it. You know, I'm not bringing this up because I don't want to see people spend money on the kids. I'm bringing it up because I don't want to see people spend money on bond brokers and developers and when the money probably could be more beneficially applied to the kids in some other way like hiring staff or enhancing staff or buying equipment. For $70 million, how many computers could you buy for the kids? I mean, you could probably buy, you have 4,000 kids, um, and if you spent $1,000 on each of them, that's uh, $4 million. That $1,000, you could buy every kid in the district a laptop and a desktop. Would that be better than some of, you know, I mean, we, we bought fields and all these other things, and we've been told this is the next, you know, this is it for now, this is it for now, this is it for now, and this is the largest one. And again, I don't even know if I have a problem with it intrinsically, but it certainly does not have to be voted on in April. And they tried to do it in March. Anyway, that's all I have to say about that. We've got like four minutes left, and... One thing I really wanted to, to talk about, and I'm not going to have much time, um, is the situation in Japan with the nuclear reactors. Um, one thing, I guess I can help uh, expand the time here. Um, I have a lot of information about uh, just about everything that I'm talking about here and other stuff um, at my Facebook page, which is at uh, www.facebook.com slash Don DeBar. That's my name, D O N. D-E-B-A-R. And also I have a blog um, where I do writing about, uh, you know, issues, more uh, things that are uh, national and transnational and, um, you know, uh, along those lines of policy uh, issues, um, war and peace and stuff. And that's at uh, Don DeBar, D-O-N-D-E-B-A-R dot blogspot dot com. Uh, there you're going to find... Uh, at the uh, Facebook page, you're going to see a, a whole bunch of information about uh, the possible uh, 
impacts that we're going to suffer, the likely impacts we're going to suffer as a consequence of the accident that's still ongoing as of uh, March 23rd, 2011. And I'm going to guess, uh, you know, for months, if not years, um, in uh, Japan, um, we have uh, s several uh, things that we can study uh, to try to, uh, you know, guess at what we're looking at. Um, most notably, though, is uh, Chernobyl. People have been told that they should compare what's going on in Japan right now to Three Mile Island because it's a five on a scale of seven. But that has nothing to do with what the likely health impacts are going to be um, or other damage to the uh, environment, the food supply, the water supply, etc. The way that you measure that is essentially by measuring the amount of material that is released into the atmosphere and um, into the groundwater and into the ocean um, and then following the patterns of disbursement and overlaying that over population centers, um, the food production centers, um, you know, water uh, reservoirs and, um, and water supplies and the uh, interaction between uh, water uh, supplies. Those things will tell you what happened because what's peeling off of these reactors is radiotoxic material and the quantity of it is already probably on a scale uh, with Chernobyl and we have six reactors involved here with six spent fuel uh, storage facilities one on top of each reactor. So as these things are being released into the atmosphere um, they are aggregating and if we haven't passed Chernobyl already in terms of the aggregate amount of material released we certainly are going to be. So looking at the possible uh, effects of that we need to be looking at what's happened in Chernobyl. And if you go to my Facebook page, uh, again, that's facebook.com slash Don DeBar, D-O-N-D-E-B-A-R. I have studies from uh, the World Health Organization, um, from the IAEA, um, and other you know, authorities on what happened. P put it this way, 30,000 people have died just trying to keep Chernobyl from you know becoming worse, from totally melting down, maintaining the site in the last 25 years. Okay, just that number alone should tell you something. Thank you for watching. Uh, thanks to Bob for allowing me to host these last two weeks, and uh, thank you to the folks at Newcastle Community Television. Um, I'm going to vote no on that bond myself. You do what you like, but there's certainly some questions to ask. Take care of yourself. Be well, and take care of each other. Peace.